because this is uh, something that's already familiar to you. You have dealt with it in the context of uh, kinematics. And what we are going to do now is we are going to re-approach this old question with uh, this new tool of energy. All right, let me draw, draw the picture on the board. So it describes a ball being launched with some initial velocity v0 at some angle theta above the horizontal. Is that the description it's using? Yes. And here's the, the ball is being launched at some height h. And it says it uh, goes through all of this and then lands some air here. And it asks a couple of the questions. Uh, let me get to the part that you can answer based on, um, and oh, I guess that's part A. So um, here's the question that it's asking. As the ball lands, so it's going this way, it has some final speed. It asks, what is the final speed of the ball? And you know, um, how would you have approached this question? if you are doing this in kinematics with the projectile motion? Like, um, how would you have figured out this final speed here? Okay, you could find the time. Let me tell you a little shortcut. Uh, take all your good one now. Well, um, for example, it says, uh, well, you know your initial time, your initial velocity is zero. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay, so you guys will always want to, yeah. Let me do, show you a shortcut that doesn't involve going through this. I can actually go all the way from beginning to the end. I only have like two minutes, so let me do it that way. It's quicker. So uh, this is how I'm gonna do it. I'm going to you know, break up this into components. So define x and y, y coordinate. So initial velocity is going to have x component, and it's going to have y component. Right? Final velocity, same thing. It's going to have an x component and the y component. Do you know how, so the reason I don't want to find the time and all this stuff is that I'm, right, the question is not asking about the range. It's only asking about the speed. So I want to say, all right, um, can I relate this directly to this? How are they related? They're the same. That's one of the properties of projectile motion. All right, I know the x component. That's great. Now can I relate this to this directly in a single equation? Free squared formula? What? Yeah, I can use free squared formula. I can treat vertical motion like a 1D motion with some initial velocity, displacement, and to con constant acceleration. So let me write that down. I can say v final y is squared is equal to v initial, v initial y squared. Now I have to be careful. Displacement is downward. Gravitational acceleration is also downward. Oh, so it's going to be positive. Plus 2 times g times h. Good? All right. So that's my v final. If I want the, just the component, then it'll be square root of all of this. Now, let me write out what the final speed v final is using Pythagorean theorem. When I do that, this is what you get. v final squared is equal to um, the x squared, or that, um, yeah, v, yeah, v final squared is equal to x component squared plus y component squared. So it's going to be v naught x squared plus this thing squared so v naught y squared plus 2gh. Now, this is where if you recognize this, you can write it down even simpler. You can write it down as equal to v initial squared plus 2gh. Right? This is based on kinematics alone. Now, let me show you the connection to energy in this single last step. So, you know, I wonder, can I have done this problem using conservation of energy? Yes, you could have. 
And the way you would see it is you would take this entire expression and multiply it by 1 half m, which you might not be sure why I'm doing that, but that's something I can do, right? Like no, nothing stops me from multiplying the whole equation by plus 1 half m, where m is the mass of the ball. And if, when I do that, this is what you end up with. This whole thing becomes the, let me put this on the left-hand side. The left-hand side is 1 over 1 half m v naught squared plus 1 half times 2, so zero, uh, 1, m g h is equal to 1 half m v final squared. 1 half m v final squared. So you have seen some of the energy formulas. As you look at this expression, do you recognize some of those energy formulas? What is the first term telling you? It's telling you the initial kinetic energy. What's the second term telling you? Yeah, initial potential energy at this height. What is the last term telling you? Yeah, final kinetic energy. And I guess you implicitly say here, potential energy is zero. So yeah, um, so the expression that you get using kinematics is equivalent to the expression you would get using conservation of energy. So, um, so yeah, uh, now the difference is the kinematics is hard. A lot of people struggle with it, I say semester over semester. A lot of people forget to go through all of these steps. With energy, it's a single equation. So all the questions that you thought were difficult using kinematics, it's gonna get easier when you use energy conservation. And you will see that next week when we go through uh, more conservation law problems, and we'll introduce one more conservation law that you will need as you go through these um, problems.